looking at the film of the Packers against the Chicago Bears in Week 18 that pushed them into the playoffs. This is going to be focused on the offense, and really it's going to be focused on a few players. Dontavian Wicks had a huge game. Obviously, Jordan Love as well had a very good game. This offense really could have put up more than 17 points. They had a lot of missed opportunities. I'm not going to go over a lot of those. But I also want to highlight Rasheed Walker, some of his positive plays and also his negative plays, and then also the route running of Jaden Reed. So lots of players stood out in this one. Just a pretty smooth offensive performance overall. And then I'll be back with you guys at the end of the video with kind of a recap. But we'll start out just going in chronological order from the start of the game to the end of the game. I've picked out about 16 or 17 plays to show you. That way... I can kind of give you some insight as to what this team is doing and why they were so successful against the Bears. So let's get into the film. All right, play number one, we've got Dontavian Wicks with a great route at the top here. And I'll just have it play through one time so you can kind of see. We've got kind of a flat, flat out and bench. And Love is able to get that ball there. We'll rewind it a little bit. That way we can draw this up all right so drawing this up we've got essentially a deep bench route where Dobbs is going to be coming in and then you've got a flat a flat and then you're going to have Dontavian Wicks on what seems to be an option route where he gets up to the top and then he gets to choose which way he goes and he's going to choose to go out here rather than in and you'll see why he does that once we actually roll this film so here we go on the snap. Something that you need to pay attention to, it's something that Wicks does very, very well, is he's going to attack the defensive back. All right, so he's going to basically attack straight at in the stem. So you can see he's basically sprinting right towards. And right here where I've paused it, you can see he's starting to shift his weight. So he's kind of arced outside, but now it kind of seems like he's going to be going inside based on where he's planted his foot. Right, and just watch what this does to the DB's hips. Right, the DB is kind of playing even right now, but because of this movement, you're just going to see how much that sets up this out route. So, Wicks gets him to turn around. Right, this is a quarters coverage, so you've got one, two, three, four guys back deep. So, he gets him to turn around, and in order to keep that a one on one, he has to go out. So, Wicks is smart enough now. He set him up. He got his hips turned. Now it's impossible for this DB to turn around and make a play, right? Of course, this is a big boy throw as well. This is 15 yards, right, on an out, and that's the longest throw. He's from the right hash, and he's got to throw it all the way to the sideline. So, he's got to make it through. Not only this player on the zone, but also the player that's in the quarter flat. So you have to fit it between these two players just perfectly, and that's what Love does. Dontavian probably could have, you know, broke on the ball a little bit. That's way, that way it doesn't just kind of loft in there, and he doesn't get that contact, but he ends up coming down with it anyways. But... Just this setup of the route is really incredible by Wicks here. It's a nice a first down. All right, coming up right after that play, we've got a first and 10 in the first quarter. And this is going to be a Y counter. So a Y counter is essentially the Y, which is going to be the tight end. He is going to shift across the formation and then block for this run. And they're essentially going to ignore two players. They're going to ignore this player, and they're going to ignore this player. And that works out because number 90 right here gets a little bit lost. So essentially, Walker is going to come out, and he's going to be blocking the second level right away. And you're going to see his block here, and it's just very, very incredible. So we've got him coming down, blocking Edmonds, and then you're going to have Kraft coming out and blocking Edwards, the admin, Edmonds and Edwards linebackers of the Bears. A little bit of a tongue twister, but then you're going to have essentially an action here where it's going to be a counter back behind. So let's watch that play out real quick.
And of course, that springs Jones for a run, and you've got, you know, big number 63 still engaged in the block there. So now we'll watch it a little bit slower, kind of pausing in between. Number 90, he bites on the inside. He thinks it's going to be going the other way because all the action of the offensive line is heading down that way. So he thinks it's going to be a run to the other side, but then he catches this, you know, counter by the tight end. So he can't make a play, and then Edwards steps up, and of course, Kraft does a very nice job of sealing him out here. All right, and we'll look at it from this angle as well, just to see that seal by Kraft. So you can see Walker already up to the next level. Kraft is coming around the edge, and just look at when he makes contact, he turns him, right? So he's turned him away from Jones, and that gives Jones a choice of where he wants to go, because now this defender is essentially out of the play. And then Walker is there. But one of the problems with Walker, we'll just kind of continue on this next play right away. That is a great play, right? He stayed on him the entire time, but I think one of the big issues is the consistency with him. So we're going to highlight, you know, Walker again on the left side. But I think this is one of the issues that we have with him. He's done, you know, pretty well in the second half of the season. He's progressed very well. He's done a lot of good things. but. I think he was a little bit gassed, right? You would like his motor to be a little bit higher, so let's just watch it. It's to the back side, and just look at the lazy stab that he gives. He just kind of puts one arm out and then lazily walks back, right? It looks like he's a little bit gassed. And if he's, you know, fully active and if he fully blocks this guy out, that allows jones to have a much better cutback because instead of you know cutting back into a defender if that guy is sealed off you're gonna have a gap of like three yards there which aaron jones can fit into a yard gap and instead it's that guy making the play i mean you still get positive yardage on it but it's still something that you would like to see a little bit more consistency a little bit more high motor rather than just oh, i'm gonna put one hand on him and that's gonna be enough because he's backside pursuit right so some of the things that we see from Sheed is, you know, they're they're quite good. But, of course, you also have some of the issues of just lazily stabbing one arm, hoping that, you know, that's going to solve the problems. All right, here we have the Jordan Love drop touchdown pass by Romeo Dobbs. I'll just let it play out first. That way you can see with your own eyes first what happens. Love throwing across his body. Dobbs hits him in the hands, but he drops it because of the contact on the ground. But I want to highlight a couple players on this as we go back. This is essentially everything is covered up, right? So two people that I want you to keep an eye on are going to be Kraft and Dobbs. Obviously, Dobbs is the intended target, so that's where everyone's eyes go anyway. But essentially, you're going to have a stick combination. You're going to have a sit down here. You're going to have kind of a little bit deeper of an out and then you've got another stick down on this side. And then you're going to have a bench, which is basically coming across the middle or a basic at this point. So it looks like it's about, you know, 10, 10 yards on this route. Uh, but you're going to want to keep an eye on Kraft and Dobbs because this is essentially a scramble drill. So let's play it out a little bit. So you can see Kraft is going to be the first one that bails on his route. He knows that his quarterback is going to be scrambling soon. He needs to get open, so he works back towards the quarterback, tries to box out his defender, and you can see Dobbs does the same thing. Dobbs sees this empty area of grass based on his route earlier. You can see that that spot is going to be clean, so he's going to kind of loop back and give Love a chance. And Love is going to step up, roll to his right, throw across his body, and put the ball in a perfect spot. Unfortunately, Dobbs is not able to come down with it, but that's stuff that you love to see from younger receivers is that scramble drill. So he, nothing there. It was fully covered up. Kind of runs out to the right, throws across his body, gets just punched out as he hits the ground. Unlucky. All right, here we have another second and six. This is in the second quarter. Just kind of let it play out. Nice completion in the middle of this zone. The Bears do love playing zone. This was a cover three by the looks of it. 
and Reed is going to be just wide open here. But let's go back, kind of rewind, see what is happening here. It's just a great concept by Lafleur. So we're going to have Reed, who's going to motion across. So he's going to motion across, and then he's going to basically run a kind of it's a wide Dover route is what generally the Shanahan system calls it. A Dover, a wide Dover is essentially you go outside the numbers. So I'm a little bit, a little bit off there, but you're going to see he comes outside the numbers and then around 15 yards is when he's going to start heading towards the middle of the field. And eventually it's going to reach 20, but he's just so wide open that basically out of his break, he's catching it at the hash. And in order to make sure that is open, you're going to have these two receivers run vertical. One does a post, the other one does a corner, right? And by doing that, you're going to get the attention of the safeties. So having this motion and kind of delayed Dover route is going to leave a spot in this zone because it looks like it's a traditional cover three. So we'll watch that play out. There you go. You've got the two receivers running their vertical routes. So that is taking the attention of the two safeties. And by having these underneath routes and nobody on this side of the field, you've got everyone focused on those underneath routes. Nobody's looking behind them. And these middle hook zones are just going to be wide open. So you've got a nice completion there. Reed catches it, heads up field, gets extra yardage for a Packers first down. And the other thing that I wanted to highlight on this play is just looking at this matchup here. You've got Zach Tom by himself on an island with Montez Sweat. Some of you might have seen this on Packers Twitter if you guys follow a lot of the accounts. But you've got Ben Finale, I believe, who was talking about this matchup. And it's just Zach Tom looks so boring. The, same, the rep is the same every time, but he just somehow wins. And it's four seconds that he's just... Handling Montez Sweat, giving Jordan Love a clean pocket, and just a perfect ball there to Jaden Reed. So, lovely job by the offensive line this game. By this trio up here, we've got a kickout that's going to be coming from Kraft. He's going to kick out the defensive end and basically turn him, which is going to give him a perfect alley. And then, it's not really great blocking by the wide receivers but they're going to down block here and they're basically just going to cause a traffic jam. And you'll see that this is just going to create a lane for Aaron Jones to run through. So there you've got a little bit of a handoff on the inside. Kraft completely seals off his defender there. Gives Jones a lane and he's able to cut through and get a first down out of this run. And you'll really see it from the backside perspective from the end zone angle. Kraft does a very good job one-on-one -on -one with a defensive end and able to head up field for a first down. So you can see the, the boys here as well, Wicks and Reed making contact. At least <laughs> Wicks kind of getting blown up a little bit, but you know he's able to get in the way of a linebacker that's crashing down on the run. And that's just enough to push Jones forward. All right, this is the first touchdown by Jordan Love. This is a touchdown to Dontavian Wicks. And of course, this is going to be an ankle breaker. So I want you to key in when I play this out. Just watch Dontavian Wicks here on the release. We've got the motion across, but then that jab step looks very similar to another Packers receiver. But you can see DB swiping to get his hand on Wicks and is just completely left in the dust. So in man coverage, that is not ideal. And Dontavian is going to end up scoring a touchdown there. So just nice kind of float by Jordan Love as well. I thought he could probably hit him a little bit earlier. If we look at this angle, we're going to see that release from Wicks on the left side. Now he's just going to spring free. He's wide open here. But the thing is, this is not Jordan's first read, right? So this is the third read in the progression. So we've got the number three, we've got the number two here, and then the number one is off the screen on the right. So this is the third read in the progression. So he just sees, now that he's looking at Melton, he sees that it's double covered. He sees in his peripheral that 
Dontavian is wide open, so he just launches it and is able to get it just out of the reach of the other defender who's trying to catch up. And Wix is able to come down with it and do a Lambo leap. Just before half, the disaster. This one probably should have been an interception. So Love, obviously, 16 seconds left in the half. The clock was stopped. You figure you might as well take a shot at the end zone. So he throws this ball up. He thinks that he can beat this coverage. Probably not the best idea because you've got one, two, three defenders in the area. So if he misses this ball either left or right, it's very you know, high chance that it's going to be intercepted. And you see he misses it left and high, and that's right where the DB is. But Heath does a good job of knocking it out there. There really wasn't anything open. The Bears played this very well. This halftime, you know, drive was not great. Also not a very good throw. You kind of see it wobble a little bit. It's not spitting the right way. So that might have contributed to the drop as well. But before the half, there was a few questionable plays. This was 16 seconds left. Then the next play, you've got them, you know, passing it out to Wicks on the right side. So with 11 seconds left and he gets tackled and the DB just makes a very good play. I don't have that clip to show you, but the Bears just played this drive very, very well. They kept everything in front of them. They kept them in bounds and kept the clock running. So they kept points off the board. So this was one of the missed opportunities for the Packers. Definitely could have done a better job of getting points in this situation. All right, here we go. We're going to look at Wicks again on this. So Wicks and his footwork has just been amazing. Pretty great for a rookie. So this is just going to be looking at some of the yards after catch and the move that he puts on Jackson. Just incredible. Just makes him whiff. So another great play by Wicks. He just had an all-around great game. Obviously had a couple touchdown grabs, but just his route running, his ability to make people miss. You can see he's already left him off the planet. He's rolling. I believe it was Cheesehead TV that made a, a meme with that, but just a great route by Wix overall. Then we're going to have this next play, which is just a great down block by Melton. Nice Jones run, so we'll kind of go back to this. Again, this is similar to the play that they ran earlier. This is a counter, so you're going to have all of these offensive linemen and the tight end crashing down to the left. So you have that movement that tells the linebackers, oh, it might be coming to left, and then you have this tight end. The F on in this case is going to be coming around the backside and then blocking, and then you're going to have a down block from Melton. So... Just kind of watching that play out. Melton is going to get down. He's going to block the nickel. Both Sims and Melton block the nickel. And then that's just enough space to give Jones extra yardage. And Jones is just in peak form right now. Jones is playing super well. And it couldn't happen at a better time. So you got this little pitch out. Obviously, that's trying to get those linebackers to move and shift to the right. And it gets them caught up inside. So you see the linebackers have already stepped up for that pitch, expecting it to go to the other side. And everyone gets caught up. And Jones just fits through that seam, evades tacklers, and is able to get good yardage for a first down. So just great job overall by Jones. One of the audibles. So Love just has great control of the huddle, great control at the line of scrimmage right now. And... This is one of the audibles that he says is Cali Jerry, Cali Jerry. And I kind of figured out what the Cali means later on because he, he uses another audible later in the game that you pick up on the mic and it's Cali Gary, Cali Gary, which I don't think I have in my other plays. But from what I can tell, the Cali is basically telling this first receiver to do a kind of lazy slant. So it's this slant that comes inside. And then Wicks is essentially going to run like an arches route, which is a slant, but you have a little bit of a delay. And that basically what that is going to try to do is if you've got a slant coming here, and if you have a slant coming here, you're going to have a spacing issue in between, right? We don't want that spacing issue. So instead of running that slant, you're going to run an 
arches route, which you're going to come out with an outside break. And then you're going to come back in and you can see, you know, there's just going to be more space for this to happen. So just good design here by Lafleur is, you know, getting that play in there. So you can see that's going to leave just enough space for Wicks on the break. And he's going to be able to fight through for a touchdown. So just a nice job here. And later in the game, you're going to get a Cali, Cali Gary call, which essentially Reed is going to do that same thing. He's just going to shoot straight to the middle. And then instead, you're going to have a different route concept on the outside. And there we go. A touchdown for Wicks, second one. All right, so this one I think everyone is familiar with. You've got Jordan Love calling for an audible there. On the TV broadcast, you could hear him calling can, can, can. Can, can just means essentially you're going to the second play in the huddle. Uh, and so there were two play calls that came out here. The first one must have been while they were empty, but when he canned, it was supposed to be an RPO. I think it, all the receivers felt it was just a run play, but it is supposed to be an RPO. And I think that the person to blame here is essentially going to be read this is it ends up being a fumble right as we play this out so we'll watch it one more time you've got jones motioning in you've got the handoff but love you can see he's looking over he's expecting this to be an rpo and reed hasn't gone to the flat so he ends up running ends up getting stripped ends up fumbling and it's the bears possession but if we go back this is why i think it's Reed's fault because just look at the alignment here right it looks like you've got man here you've got man here so if it's man there then it's essentially man here or it's man here which <laughs> you've essentially got a three on two because this linebacker is so far back right so if we go back to the start of this play on the snap if Reed is just going out here in the flats, right? Obviously, he's come upfield again. But if he just kind of goes out in the flat from the start, he's got two blockers in front of him. There and there. All he needs to get to is here for the first down. So if Reed would have been paying attention to the call, then it would have been an easy first down. And I don't necessarily blame him, right? There's so much that they have to do in the huddle. Right, they give you a play call and then they say can and then you give they give you another play, right? So it's not an easy thing to do, but I think the biggest thing is is something I want you to pay attention to is once we get here. So this is right when the audible, but I want you to pay attention to the two boys up here at the top, right? You've got these two, they're both on the line. And Reed is trying to say that he's on, right? So you're going to see a shift while he's making this audible. So Reed paying attention to the side judge trying to say, I'm on. You've got Melton adjusting as well. And I think because they're so focused on adjusting, they're communicating to each other. You can see Wicks and Reed talking. I think there was a miscommunication, right? I think because you've got so much going on at the same time that there's going to be a miscommunication. Reed thinks that, oh, we're just going to be blocking. It's just going to be an inside zone. So someone messed up. I would imagine that it was Reed, but, you know, Reed's been having a fantastic year, so it's not the end of the world, but that's just something that happens, especially with younger players. You know, learning the offense, first of all, coming in to a brand new system at an NFL level, and then having to adjust on the fly when your quarterback is is making those adjustments is very, very difficult. Was in the fourth quarter, first and 10, it was an off-schedule play. So this is something that LaFleur said in the post game that, it was not in the progression. Reed is not in the progression. And I think this was just a good instinctual play by Reed. When we go back to the beginning here. So we've got this kind of rollout where I think Reed is just supposed to be a distraction here. So you've got him that's heading up field. Who knows if he stepped out, right? It might've been illegal man touching it, but Great job just heading upfield, recognizing that they're in a cover two. So they are in a cover two. You've got essentially all of these guys that are 
holding the same level and you've got two deep. So you've got someone threatening vertical. So this was just a good read <laughs> by Jaden Reed to instead of just continue this route out here is to actually head up field because you've got this vertical. He's going to be taking this receiver along with this safety. So there's going to be nobody playing here in supports, right? There's no way that Brisker, obviously Brisker is covering a bunch of no names here, but very good presence by Reed to turn that upfield and nice job by Love to find him and obviously make that happen for a big play in the fourth quarter. Just when they needed it, got the motion over. So I think the progression here is just supposed to be your one here, your two here, and then of course you've got the vertical post that is there as well. So you've got your post, which would be your third, but that's obviously he would have to turn his hips to make that play. So he just does a good job after seeing his first read. Jaden Reed ends up being his second read and sees him turn up field and he's able to fit that pass there. So that was just a great job by these two young players able to get a big play for the Packers offense. This one probably could have been a touchdown. It's the Melton catch in the back of the end zone that was rolling on his leg. You know, I, I originally agreed with the refs. It was very hard to tell if he had possession, but we'll watch it from both angles here. And I really only want to watch it from this back angle anyways, but you're going to see that pass is just perfect. Right? So we're going to see Love looking at his read, second read, third read, and now he's resetting already and he's firing. So he's gotten a lot better with his footwork, being ready to fire every time he's looking through his progression. And you can see he's just absolutely hyped down here at the bottom, thinking that his guy caught it. And, you know, Melton thinks the same thing. But of course, you know, the it ends up being ruled not a catch, incomplete on the field. And then they change it to a catch and then they review it and they say not a catch. So just... Kind of a weird drive. There were a few weird moments in this Packers game, and this was just one of those moments of, is it a catch, is it not a catch? DJ Moore had one as well. Just a few weird moments during this game. All right, so this is an interesting play. This is something that I just saw on, on Twitter today, Dan Orlovsky talking about it. It's one of the plays I picked out anyways, but it's essentially a kind of two-way go. You're going to have man, so you... This is what Orlovsky was pointing out. You've got man because you know this safety is going to be covering the tight end. You've got man across the board based on the position of all these guys. Jordan Love knows it's going to be man coverage, right? And he knows that this route is going to be a beater, right? So he just has to attack him vertically and then get horizontal distance. And Jaden Reed does a very good job of attacking the corner here. So he's got what looks like right now inside leverage on him just barely but reed is going to basically basically attack him directly so then it forces him to choose which way he wants to go and then he's going to immediately break across and he's just going to get enough distance to get a completion here so he attacks the inside shoulder kind of sets up with that little juke move there, am I going to go outside or inside? Takes it inside and Love recognizes it immediately and is able to get it right to read. So the other part of this play that was interesting that Orlovsky pointed out is essentially what's going on over here. So you've got what looks like a screen that's going to be happening because of all this movement that happens. You've got all these linemen sliding over to that side. You've got one free lineman who's not blocking anyone. And then you've got a tight end who's engaged. And then after this tight end engages, he's going to kind of move up the field here and try to block the safety. So it gives this kind of illusion of a screenplay on that side. So you can see that Musgrave is attacking this safety, which keeps him much closer and keeps more distance away from where the ball is actually going. But even if that wasn't open, right, say 29 is actually hip to hip with this guy and he's able to make a play on the ball. Then you have Aaron Jones, which is coming on an angle route or a Texas route where he's kind of come out of the backfield showing this screen. But instead, he's going to be cutting back over the field 
And that would just be another big play if Jordan Love had more time to hit Jones here because then you'd have a full speed Aaron Jones cutting across and probably getting around the backside of the defenders here. But just a great play design overall by LaFleur. And obviously a very nice pass to Jaden Reed for that first down. All right, and then we're just going to go quickly on these last two plays. So both of these last plays, this is obviously the fourth quarter. You've got four minutes left, first and 10. It's your four-minute offense. You're just going to try to keep the ball in bounds, kill some clock. And this is the type of play that we need from Sheed every time. You're going to see it from this backside perspective. He's essentially just going to kind of wrap around and block and seal that side. So the linebacker basically gets caught on the inside, and that just gives enough space for Jones to get on behind him. So we'll go back just a little bit, kind of clearing that area. So he shoves down, which is essentially going to give just enough space to get through. Good job by Jenkins keeping the <laughs> defensive tackle's hands off of him. And Brisker comes up, misses a tackle, and he's able to get two extra yards. And then we've got the final play, which is just going to be a good job by Melton again. So things that I've liked to see about these younger receivers is they do a very good job of blocking downfield. They're not afraid to block, and I think that's why the Packers have been playing so well lately. You've got a lot of receivers that are downfield willing to block and just getting the hands there as he's set to break down for the tackle is just enough to break Aaron Jones loose. So he does get an arm on him, but he can't wrap him up. Jones does a very good job of maintaining his balance, and he's able to break in for the first down. And that play was right after the two-minute warning. They get a first down, no timeouts, game over, victory formation after this. So just a very good job overall by the team. Aaron Jones just fitting through a gap like that, just crazy. And then Bo Melton making a play allowing Jones to cut outside and get a first down. So everyone hyped up, get a first down, seals the win, answering victory formation. And there you have it. Very good game overall by the Packers. So you can see, you know, Wicks had an incredible game. Reed had one mistake, but obviously he played very well. Otherwise, these young receivers are great route runners, as it turns out. And Love is just in full control of the offense. So I'm looking forward to breaking down the Cowboys film because I actually think that the Packers are going to give them a very tough time, especially with their offense. You've got, you know, Stefan Gilmore, who is potentially injured because he dislocated his shoulder. His shoulder popped out in their game last week. So they might be without Stefan Gilmore. So we're going to see, you know, what happens with the Cowboys and their defense. But of course, you know, there's a big question mark with the Packers defense. So I will be looking at the Packers defense in a video tomorrow. I've done the offense today. I'll do the defense tomorrow. And then I'll do my preview of the game that is coming up this weekend against the Dallas Cowboys. I'll release that the next day. So we've got on Tuesday, we've got today, obviously the offense. Wednesday is going to be the defense. And then by Thursday, I will have my preview of the matchup against the Cowboys, which I'll probably mix in some game film and I'll look at PFF as well to see what they say. So thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. And of course, go Pack Go.